and uh, Mr. Shaw had made that journey seamless in Dorfma Agritech Services. So without much ado, I want Mr. Shaw to give us his opening text to his own topic. And uh, from the uh, from the agenda, Mr. Shaw is speaking on um, trends and drivers in the agricultural sectors. Now, um, there are certain trends that change the narrative, and I want Mr. Shaw to introduce the topic to us and the summary of what we should take um from that topic in itself mr Indian, if you're on this call right now can you unmute and give us a, a an introduction into the trends and drivers of the agriculture sector in nigeria thank you okay uh good afternoon everyone thank you so much mr adonisha and it's a big 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 pleasure to be here uh i also uh, recognize that I, I am not alone i've got quite a couple of people also listening to me at different locations within Nigeria. I, I also appreciate our time together. Uh, briefly, just to go on point, we want to talk about the trends and drivers of agricultural productivity in Nigeria. I just want to say uh, agriculture, unlike many other, um, you know, how would I call it, many other profession now, right, is a profession that has been existing for a long time. Like, I remember speaking um, earlier on at, I think maybe the day one of the session, I said agriculture is as actually old as man, which means that the, the, the moments that, you know, as human beings, we realize that we are hungry and uh, we need to eat. At that moment was when agriculture started because, you know, uh, the first man at that point in time would have started reasoning that, okay, well, what would i eat okay uh okay let me eat this you know let me eat that if many of us hear our conversations with you know uh, um what's written in uh, the bible you know some things were written as uh, you can eat this and then you can't eat that right so uh at that moment started uh, making people understand that okay we can cultivate this let's not make what we eat uh, go away we need to uh reproduce what we eat we need to produce what we can eat and also those things that we can't eat we need to make sure that they don't find um, their ways into um, what we eat and so the differentiation between you know what you call a crop and what you call a weed began and you know i could just go on and on and on about how the history of uh, agricultural productivity came in but then as you know we started getting many and we started feeling various parts of the world you know we needed to understand that hey what we eat what we drink needs to be able to cover for everyone it needs to be able to reach everyone right the demand for it is uh you know there and we need to also be able to meet that demand and so some people decided to take up this as an opportunity you know they say where there is a problem there is there has to be a solution right but most times the problem is always uh visible while the solution is always hidden only a select few actually determining themselves to search for that solution to search for how to solve that particular solution and so uh these things bring brought about trends you know you uh choosing okay what part do i want to uh, cover what solution do i want to bring Right? There are many solutions to a particular problem. There is this particular, uh, you know, Yoruba proverb that says, uh, on a right? So, you know, a different roads lead into the market. So different solutions actually uh, can solve uh, a particular set of problems. There might be different problems too, right? But nonetheless, you get to understand that different solutions can actually solve the same problem. and what is the number one problem of agriculture it's the demand it's the demand the problem of solving hunger if people don't get hungry if people don't get uh thirsty yes i have to put thirst too because you know uh hunger is not just about food it's not just about maize it's not just about cassava it's not just about uh, uh plantain it's also about uh you know the grapes the oranges, the uh, uh, the pineapples, right? So we get to understand that so long as someone is hungry, so long as someone is thirsty, that in itself is a big problem. And these problems bring in 
different trends. Now I'm just going to, I'm not going to start from the trends of, you know, um, what has happened in times past in the history, right? Not, not every one of us are, you know, good students of history per se. And, and not many people have actually decided to check back and say, hey, how did I put your start? And what happened in 19 days? What happened in 18 days? What are, not many of us, uh, you know, we don't really need to have all of those. But then again, we need to more better understand uh, where we are going to, right? The main problem is, like I said, hunger and thirst. And everybody would ask you, you would ask themselves a, a particular question. Uh, while here, you ask yourself a particular question. How do I fend for myself? And if you have a family, you would also ask a major question. How do I fend for those within my family, either it being nuclear or extended and this opens up the opportunity for some people to think of you know getting farmlands right uh, and so farmland that could so a lot of people have been coming into getting farmland, acquiring farmlands, uh, etc., and the like. But I'm just going to state a couple of, you know, familiar trends that are happening in our time, right? In recent times, I'm just going to state that. And these things drive in productivity. Uh, um, for you to drive in those productivity, you need to understand that which trend am I going for, right? So we, we have uh, a, a set of people that are going towards, you know, soilless farming, soilless farming. Soilless farming is becoming a very, very big thing now. I think it started around uh, some time back at 2017, 2018. Uh, we had, um, uh, what's his name again? I'm, I'm trying to recollect the name of, uh, you know, a, I think it was a Sunday or a summer. A very, very uh, particular man actually started that particular trend right here in Nigeria, right? And so we have soilless farming. Uh, Precision farming, soil testing, farmer Samson. Ah, I can see someone just helping me with that on um, the income message. Yes, yes, uh, Samson Obuli. Thank you. That's the that's the name. So um, he started that particular trend, and you know, is is someone that, uh, funny enough, is also of uh, uh, royalty, per se. And you know, having that same initial uh, attribute of solving the problem for his community for his people and seeing the vision of how can he solve this problem without necessarily depending on uh, the land on you know land minerals and all you know open him up to that opportunity right so uh, and that leads me to talk about the vision that leads me to talk about the vision what vision are you seeing what vision are you looking at right uh, some of us you could look at like i was saying earlier your vision might be, you know, how do you fend for yourself? Your vision might be, how do you fend for your family members, right? That is part of the problem, and so it's a vision. But then, if you want to, you know, transcend into productivity that is going to touch uh, various aspects of Nigeria and maybe even uh, uh, go over uh, the limits of the Nigerian border, you're going to touch uh, West Africa, you're going to touch uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you're going to touch the globe. You need to understand the vision. What is your timeline? When are, what are you targeting? Right? You're targeting, uh, are you targeting 2023? Some people have a vision for 2023, right? Uh, it's going to be more notable on the political aspect. But then again, you need to have a vision. So you, to target okay 2030 i want to be able to accomplish this i want to be able to accomplish and it's not just about you setting up your goals to be more corporate but production level production wise right how many crops do you want to um harvest out of your farmland between this time to this time if you're going to drive agricultural policies you need to understand it quite a couple of us are going to be um you know winners of free land, um, um, free land promo packages going on from Dofma. Uh, it, it's not just about owning the land. You need to have a vision for 
that land. And thank God for Dovman IAS that's helping on that vision aspect. But it's what a lot of people need to have. There are quite a couple of people that have farmlands. Uh, I, I remember speaking to a particular man and he owned about six acres, but you know, it's just been there and he's not really you know used it for something really productive apart from maybe one time when he actually decided to use it for vegetables and then when the crops got bad he just decided that okay fine i'm, I'm no longer going into this particular aspect and i'll just when i'm ready i'll just build a house on that particular land right so if you're going to drive agricultural productivity you need to have a vision why i'm saying vision is because a vision will transcend challenges to every problem there's a solution to every solution there is going to be a challenge right so if you're having that vision that vision is a solution vision okay by 20 2030 i'm using 2030 because you know it's not so far anymore it's just seven years and some months time, right? So uh, a, a lot of businesses could, you know, start up at that time and start startups, startups actually drive um, most of the agricultural trends in Nigeria recently, you know, quite a couple of us have heard of uh, soilless farming, right? And that's, you know, a startup. You are, if, you are, if you are a business and you're just within the range of, you know, uh, zero, maybe, oh, let me say, uh, yes, zero years to, you know, four, five years, you are still a startup, right? And startups are the ones that are driving trends. If you check, out of are uh, also coming out of Nigeria, but nonetheless, the price is still quite small compared to many aspects of the nation. And so, we need to understand that for us to drive trends, for us to drive the agricultural uh, productivity of Nigeria, our vision is a must. It needs to be there vision what vision do i have okay i have a vision for 2030 for what aspects uh, you understand that okay there are various ways to solve the problem of food productivity and there are a lot of trends coming up now to help out with that you know quite a couple of trends are coming out on uh, uh, digitization right we had a, a speaker yesterday that talked about digitization as youths we can't be doing the same you know thing that has gone times past you know whole cut last manual laboring and the likes of that the trend for digitized farming is up that is a particular niche for us to you know uh, own and be able to provide solutions on soil testing uh, precision farming all, all of these are generally called fa smart farming but i'm just going to itemize uh, uh, the different aspects of it you know soil testing uh, precision farming uh, using erp systems uh, um, IoT systems, or IoT is the Internet of Things system. Uh, uh, many of us know it as using uh, sensors, right? You use the sensor to uh, uh, sense how a particular field is going, how the crops on a particular field are doing. You use a particular tool to identify the crops, check if the plant is doing well. You use them for disease predictions too, uh, with the way your crops or your animals are going, at the rate they are growing. There might be a breakdown of so and so disease and it might start at this time right this helps you to plan ahead now that's a, an area of uh, uh, that's the solution area for settling that same problem of hunger and thirst right and you could have a vision for it planning that having that vision enables you to understand just how much you can put in place with regards to that particular direction you don't need to do everything you don't you cannot do everything Agri and this is why um, agriculture has actually had problems compared to many industries lately if you compare agriculture to oil and gas to telecommunications to uh um, um what, what other industry could i use now let, let, let's just use okay maybe foreign exchange for instance you notice that the, the problems are not they're not the same telecommunications now people, people just need to talk right people need to just connect from one end to the other and so if you're able to form that link the only struggle you need to look forward to is making sure that the connectivity between one person and the other person gets stronger right and so if you're going into social media you want to make your social media uh, uh um, if you're providing that solution based on social media you want to make sure it's you know provides a lot of options whereas in agriculture it's not 
the same thing. The main problem is settling uh, hunger and thirst. However, there are many aspects, many routes to solving that same problem. And so, uh, like I said, soilless farming, of which soilless farming in itself has different aspects, right? Uh, there is, you know, it's either you're doing hydroponics. Uh, so most of us just term it soilless farming, but there are different I aspects, would just have types. to cut you in, Mr. Sean, because I, I, you're just giving so much juice in so little time and honestly like i imagine our, our audience are packed full already but then i want to tilt it somewhere else just um shortly uh obviously <laughs> you've experienced so much trend you've experienced so much trend and uh i i know if we give you room you're going to even touch some trends that would never even, even myself i've never even actually had of but then um to ensure that we are one with the speaker that's all with the audience um one of the recent trends that you've mentioned is um, the implementation of tech, right? You've talked about soilless farming as well, right? I want I want to ask if um, you think Africa can catch up, like particularly Nigeria, since the Nigerian event, right? Do you think Nigeria can even catch up with what the real trend out there is? For example, drone is used to spray um, fields right now, right? Drone is used to spray. Um, farmland, um, apply fertilizer, apply insecticide, even irrigate in some instances. Uh, and uh, the cost of just one drone, um, as at last check, uh, was over 1.5 mil. Um, do you think Nigeria can catch up with this sort of um, innovations um, in looking at where we are and um, what the world is actually trying to achieve? Did you get that? Okay, yes, uh, perfectly, perfectly. And that's a very, very good question. Um, yes, I, I think um, Nigeria can catch up. Although, yes, we, well, being where we are, uh, being a third world country, being um, a country that's also having our own unique set of uh, challenges, like I said, you know, every solution has its own challenges. So we, we definitely have started at a slow pace. But none, nonetheless, indeed, because of how unique we are as a, a country, as a people, it offers up many more opportunities. Of course, we, we've got, with the aspect of drone, drone technology, uh, we've got quite a couple of businesses or startups already in that particular value chain. It, it's a value chain, right? So uh, we've got quite a couple of people got uh, uh Uranus Tech we, we, we had a, a speaker from them I think that was uh, at the day one we have Uranus Tech into that we've got um uh, Geo Info Tech too right you've got Geo Info Tech and these, these guys are also into uh drone uh drone mapping and drone technologies right yes at, at inception the cost for this is small and you know that is because the raw materials needed for you to uh, uh build many of these things as it relates to uh, agricultural challenges and bring solving uh, these, these challenges. It, of course, it's not really, really subsidized, but uh, there, there are quite a lot of things that still need to be put in place. If we should compare uh, Nigeria to many of the nations that are currently using most of these technologies to augment, you notice that you know quite a lot of things still need to be infused into our own system. Um, you know, youths need to call for it. Many people are not even aware that they can map their fields, right? Uh, for instance, someone will say, I have five acres, I have 10 acres, I have two hectares, right? And they, they just know it by assumption in, in, in the sense that, you know, they've at one point in time walked around their field, uh, called a surveyor has measured the land, and then they said it is so so and so size. And, you know, that's it for them, right? And fine that that might be the size but they don't actually work with the scope that they can actually plan their field and uh map uh, map out their field to plan how the arrangements of operations on that field will be they just decide okay let's start from one end and let's work it up little by little whereas uh uh you know using a, a map of that field will have presented way more opportunities right so you just need to call for uh this tech the provisions for this is because uh, such provisions are currently low and, you know, facing our own challenges definitely is on the high side. However, uh, with more demand, 
calls for more solutions, right? So if we can call for this, the call for the applications of it, I'm definitely sure that more businesses, more startups would generally want to go into such. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The key word this is call for it. Call for it. The, uh, um, yes. Thank you so much, Mr. John. It yes, is the call, the call for it is all that we need to pick from there. The call for it. It means that individually. Um, um, thank you, Mr. John. I want to quickly cut in and then redirect us somewhere else because your time is already almost um, packing together. And we need to make sure that we are able to touch okay. some important trends that are out there. So um, the summary there is call, call for it. So it means that it's a collective effort, right? Everybody has to do their part in calling for this solution, in making sure that it is there, it is important, it is being stressed as much as possible. Okay, so um, now, um, when calling for things right now, right, um, there's the business side of calling for things, and there's the NGO side of calling for things. You know, the NGO side is, uh, I just want to make sure that a lot of people know that this thing is available, not that because it's benefit me or something. And some people are doing like, I'm come and do this thing because I can do it for you, and I want to charge you a certain amount of money for that service. So, in your own perspective, would you think it's beneficiary? Because why right, you want to call for something? Do you, do you think it's good to call for it as just a philanthropic activities? Do you think people are going to respect it that way? Or, or do you think it should be called in as uh, from a business perspective like come and buy this thing or come let me um, sell and install it for you or come let me and let me teach you how to get it done but for a few not for free and stuff like that so um do you think it is best to call for it as a philanthropist or as an ngo perspective or as a business perspective okay um, um I, I, I think you know it, it's a fine interplay of of all of these um, areas. Actually, I, I think it's a fine interplay of all of these areas. Um, we've seen quite, like I said, quite a couple of businesses would you know come up with regards to this particular aspect, and they would have a vision for it, right? Of course, we'd see people like NGOs uh, come up, and hey, they just want to you know go ahead. Maybe they, they might work with the vision of you know mapping out uh so and so hectares of land right and you know in, in being able to fulfill their vision your farmland might just be uh, a part of that particular um vision and so they might just want to help you do it for free right and nonetheless there might also be businesses that uh do these things and provide the services they have a business model for it and they also want to do it for a fee right Not, nonetheless uh, I think various the interplay of these various angles uh, are actually what works. Of course, for the aspect of making money from it uh, and giving out service or offering value for service, you might want to approach it from the business aspect. But but nonetheless, even from Um, sorry, Mr. Oluwase, are you still there with us? Because I don't. Um, I, I think I think his network is a bit glitchy. Let's just hold on for a few seconds, uh, or a few minutes. Um, why does that? But then I think we've gotten some keyword from him, right? So, um, personally, irrespective of the idea, uh, the idea is the coming, um, or it's unfolding. Yes, yes. Welcome, Mr. Shion. You can we can jump right in back. Your network glitched. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hello, Mr. Sean, we can hear you. So as I was saying, from my own personal perspective, I'm a business person, so I would think the business side is very fast, right? Hello. Can you hear me, Mr. Sean, because I can yeah. hear you. Are you back with us? um you see one of the beauty of nigeria is that um, when you have so much to say network can make it so difficult to do 
So the network can make sometimes when you want to say look very difficult. So um, I don't know why Mr. Shen will be back, but in the meantime, as I was saying, I said I would prefer the business side of things. How you could innovate about how to deliver your service. You could think about um, why this is not helping. You know, with um, with an NGO, sometimes it may be taken lacklustardly or in a lacklustard manner. But um, when you are doing it as a business, you put in efforts to ensure that you're able to communicate the value from yourself down to the user of that product. And then you have a multilateral service attached to it that's going to help ensure that a lot of things are well played. So uh, I think with Mr. Shion or you in the, or Mr. Olua Shion, you're in the, or with all he has been seen, I think I see that there is a need for people to pay rapt attention to data, to information as they arise. Mr. Shion, are you back with us? Hello. Yes, 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 I am. Um, uh, I seem to please, uh, let's finish your thoughts on the topic. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Um, so like I said, an interplay of uh, these various aspects would definitely um, help in the rise of such tech. Uh, even for the aspects of NGO, you know, you're just doing it for free or doing it for value. There are other businesses that uh, will require aspects of your work and you will be able to put them to use now. They can provide, they might choose to provide uh, some financial value for what you've done, but nonetheless, uh, you will still be needed uh, to give your, that service you render would still be required by and also provide help to quite a lot of um, agricultural owners, farm owners, and you know it's just going to help them be able to better uh, uh, produce or manage all they have. Uh, they manage their fields, manage their crops, uh, manage the farm infrastructures based on all you've been able to provide. So. Uh, be it from the NGO aspect, be it from uh, the government aspect, there's also the government side of things. Um, uh, recently, I think a couple of years back, uh, we saw the first man-made um, uh, agricultural helicopter made in Nigeria, right? Uh, the first Nigerian-made uh, agri-helicopter for, you know, all of these aerial surveys, aerial uh, crop spraying and the likes. Now, the government aspect of things is also needed. So be it as a private business, be it as a government business, be it as a, an NGO, all of this interplay would definitely help in the provision of uh, such tech to agricultural owners. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's, it is what it is, right? So as I've said, uh, I, I see the business side, I'm more biased to it because I'm a business individual and um, I see business as that way to, to further it. But then there's an NGO side to it and I believe as well. So and, and I believe your 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 take on it has been has been um, instrumental in helping us see that um, the way forward might not just entirely be just one, but may even be one or maybe both of them as the case is. Now, um, to wrap you up, because we want to take questions and we have only two or three more minutes to do that before the next speaker comes in. Um, if your last advice to everyone would be summed up in one minute, what would that advice be? Because we need to take questions now, and that should be five minutes. Okay. Um, my, my last advice to everyone is the problem still remains having to solve hunger, uh, having to solve thirst, right? Uh, zero hunger is it, part of the SDG goals, that problem still remains. And the different um, different areas, the different ways to approach the problems. There are many trends coming up now, um, soilless farming, precision farming, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, sensor and everything. There is an aspect for you, right? There is an aspect for you as an agricultural owner, as someone intending to provide solutions for this. Understand that all of these trends provides a way for businesses to help solve that same um, that same problem, that same original problem. So pick an aspect and, and dominate on it, right? Pick an aspect and dominate on it. If you're going to be working on soilless farming, pick your aspect, hydroponic, aeroponic, uh, aquaponics, for those who want to use fish uh, uh, and in a closed system, pick an aspect, set a vision for it, and you know just move. You'll find out uh, all you need with time will definitely connect to what you have. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. Oyindu show You have done more than enough justice to this topic already. Now we'll be opening up the chat for only two questions, only two questions. We want to take questions as possible, but we're going to focus on two for now. 
and if they are none, we would advance going forward. So, um, uh, does anyone want to ask, ask a question or want to um, ask anything specifically? Um, are there any questions? there are none um i would want to appreciate everyone for waiting through the or uh, listening through this session and um being part of this session i also want to apologize for the initial glitch uh we have not been able to even get back our numbers after the initial glitch um, else we would have been more than 80 to 90 by now on this call particularly and we understand that there are a lot of people that are coming and going out so because of that i want to advise that if you're not on our slack channel where um, the live transcribing is happening, kindly do so. Um, yesterday, we re over the first day, we had over 460 people present on the first day. Second day, we had almost 300 people present. And um, today, a lot of people are coming and going out. So if you have any network issues at any point in time, kindly ensure that you join our Slack channel where you can get a live transcription of everything that is going on. I can see our next speaker is already in the call. And so I would want to go straight um, so introducing him, but before I introduce our next speaker, uh, I want to confirm is Mr. If Mr. Adewale Odube, so he's currently on this call right now. Mr. Adewale, are you on this call right now? Hi, Nee. Yes, I am. Morning. Good morning. Beautiful. Um, this is a great day because uh, you guys are about to experience um, a unique. Um, content right you're gonna you're about to interact with unique content right i'm going to be introducing mr adewale Odubesan, but i'm going to also be giving a background to why i think you are going to be blown away um with the content you're about to get um i had the privilege of working with mr wally Odubesan, um a few months or years back and um while i was there you see i understood that agriculture cannot be done the way it has always been done else we're going to remain the same way you see there's so much opportunity in africa there's so much opportunity in nigeria um irrespective of bad leadership there's still a place where even the players are not seeing it as the business it is and um while i was with mr wally he was able to open me up to most of those things and i, I can tell you directly as the founder of dofma that um there are a lot of quality um structure dofma picked up that would not have been so had I not been impacted. So I want to say thank you, sir, Adewali Odubeson, for all the impacts directly and indirectly over the years. And I'm certain that the audience are about to experience all of this thing. So who is Mr. Wali Uh He is the he's one of the managing directors of our agencies, the founder of Farmer Projects, and he is an advisory in several boards across many startups. He has been instrumental in the funding of certain companies, both in the healthcare sector and in the agri-tech sector, likewise the FMCG sector. So um, when um, you ask for someone that is multi-diverse, multi-impactful economy, then you are looking at Mr. Adewale Odubeso. I'll be welcoming him.